2024 will be a massive year for Star Citizen, given that the most recent ISC confirmed all of the features that we will be getting in the first half of the year. And the list of features is one of the longest I've seen. Many of these features such as EVA 2.0 and Star Map are long overdue and will change so much of the game as we know it. But there are many more features than that. How will all these features make Star Citizen a vastly different game? And what about the many other possible features? Grab your seat and get ready to dive into everything we can expect in the first half of 2024. Welcome back to the channel where we dive into the world of Star Citizen and cover recent news and updates on this highly anticipated game. Love it or hate it, Star Citizen has been making waves in recent years. Regardless of which side of the fence you're on, there's no denying that 2023 has both been a rough year for Star Citizen with the launch of 318, and also a great year with everything shown off at CitizenCon and all the patch releases we've gotten with more features being added. With Squadron 42 finally being feature complete and well over 1,000 developers moving from the single player to the multiplayer Star Citizen, 2024 will more than likely end up being a pretty explosive year for development. Many critics would say that developers have talked a lot about where they want to go in the future and haven't delivered on many of their promises. And some diehard fans and even realistic people say that while they have made many promises and comments about the future, this was the first CitizenCon where they not only told us what they want, they also showed us future features that were near completion. It's clear that in many ways CIG is daring to set the bar higher for many AAA developers. Many players know what freight elevators and persistent hangers mean, but how will it affect future gameplay? Introducing these two features brings an amazing quality of life update to Star Citizen. This gives you a centralized location to offload your cargo into an elevator to store your inventory in a more physicalized way. As it stands now, we currently interact with our inventory by opening up a screen and dragging and dropping the items into the world, and then being able to interact with them and magically drop them into the world. Freight elevators will change this by allowing us to interact with a console to call up an elevator with all the selected items that we want from our inventory, where we'll be able to interact with them directly. This makes our inventory more physicalized and gives us the ability to call ground vehicles we own, allowing us to load them directly into the ship. This resolves the many issues with the current method. Many players are waiting for this feature with great anticipation, and if you want to stay connected and get the latest and most up-to-date information on Star Citizen, make sure to subscribe and click the bell to receive notifications so you don't miss out on future updates. Persistent hangers and habs have been talked about for years, and many players have been waiting for us to get our hands on our own hangers, habs, and apartments. We all know what they are, but what do they mean for us? The introduction of these features will finally give players their homes in the verse that can be personalized. We might one day have the opportunity to place items in our hangars, habs, or apartments and make them fit our needs. Now I think this level of persistence will rely on static server meshing so we can log into the same server every time, but this would make the verse feel more lived in. Server meshing has been one of the more elusive pieces of Star Citizen we've heard plenty about for some years and received no proof of concept or demonstrations. That is until CitizenCon 2023, where we were shown the replication layer and static server meshing working in the development branch of the game. But how could this change everything in the game? As of right now, the servers are easily one of the more unreliable aspects of the game. Many players often experience 30Ks, low server FPS that affects AI responsiveness, cause slow input during intense situations, issues with the ATC system not giving you a hangar to land in, and much more. Static server meshing will allow more servers to spin up to support other zones within a system as more players travel and stream in other zones. This will balance the load between servers to enable higher server performance and reliability, resolving many of these issues. The replication layer, part of the static server meshing technology, will reduce 30Ks by allowing another server to spin up when a server goes down, and transfer players and all objects saved using persistent entity streaming to the new server seamlessly. In the most recent test of the replication layer, while this may take between 5 to 10 minutes to recover the server, this resolves many 30k issues. The delay on how long it takes to recover the server may be less and less as the years go by, but many of us will be happy to have some sort of recovery from server crashes. This will also allow other systems like Pyro, Nix, Terra, Magnus, and more to be added to the game as they complete their work, and increase the scale of the game even more over the years. Of course, StarMap, MobiGlass, and the HUD UI are currently in a pretty rough state, and have been outdated for nearly six years now. We have been waiting for these improvements for a long time. The StarMap doesn't function well and is littered with constant bugs, 
The HUD has issues with unreadable text in nearly every ship, if not all ships, and is plagued with many different UI elements that often make it feel cluttered and sometimes convoluted. And the Moby Glass has needed some updated apps for a decent amount of time. After seeing many of the HUD, Moby Glass, and Star Map updates from CitizenCon, many backers are salivating at the thought of getting their hands on this incredible and much needed update. With the update, this gives us major improvements that completely change the star map from the ground up, gives us ways to search for locations, mark locations, and see more details on the planet. This also gives us ground maps when we're on foot, and gives us a map of our ships as well. We have needed this change for so long, given how much of a pain the current star map is, and I am especially excited for this update where we can have a fully integrated system that will allow us to navigate throughout the burst using a detailed map from the ground to space to the known galaxy. The Moby Glass adds many improvements as well, integrating the new star map, many visual updates, new apps, the ability to remotely call our ship, improvements to showing character health, external information of the environment around us, better mission tracking, ship information that includes its current health, fuel, loadout, and many more updates and improvements that will give us more detailed information. This gives us a tool to have tons of information displayed at the click of a button, giving us so much more control over how we can interact with the things around us. And the new interaction system will finally make using items and interacting with the world of Star Citizen feel more natural and fluid with the removal of the inner thought system. The updated loot screen will drastically improve our ability to quickly grab essential items like ammo, med pens, and much more. Star Citizen's clunky EVA has long been a big problem for traveling through space when we get out of our ships. And we all know how painful it is to get out of our ship and float around in space engaging in EVA combat, exploring through derelict space stations and ships, bumping into walls and losing control of our character and trying to squeeze through tight environments in zero-g. This update gives us the push-pull system where we can grab onto walls and obstacles and allows us more control over our EVA movements with better physics as we float through space. This will make our experience of exploring zero-g vastly more improved and make us look forward to getting out of our ships. Many flight model updates have come and gone, and with the new master mode system, we finally have a solution. More than likely, the flight physics will constantly be adjusted and changed, and there's plenty of room to make the flight feel better. I believe that the SEM and quantum modes are the best change to the game, allowing separation between the two different speeds. So far, I have been loving 3.22's changes to flight modes, and look forward to more updates being added in master modes. I also hope that the atmospheric flight model and control surfaces come with master modes as it will overall improve many of our experiences when it comes to flying on planets within an atmosphere, changing how you handle combat, racing, larger ship flight, and VTOL. I can only hope that they add a feature that makes the ship look as if it's hovering, rather than magically levitating in the atmosphere. While we just received the new Star Hair update in 322, it looks like the new character customizer is hot on its heels. This adds more character faces, makeup, beards, more hair, scars, tattoos, and a better overall character creation tool. This will drastically increase our ability to make each of our characters even more unique than ever before and adjust each of our features in more depth. Soon CIG will be introducing new updated scopes, dynamic crosshairs, charge and drain weapons, and weapon reloading, wear, and misfire, allowing us to pack magazines, have weapons show wear and dirt as they're used more, and malfunctions as their condition deteriorates. This change will force us to react to and clear weapons jams, repair weapons or replace them, and pay closer attention to the equipment we take with us. I'm also hoping that they will release the new P8, AR, and Volt weapons with this update as well. Distribution centers are massive underground facilities that are used as centralized locations for corporations, security forces, and gangs throughout the verse. We'll be able to use these for many different things from repairing, rearming, and refueling ships, buying weapons and items, trading and buying goods, and also breaking into and raiding the distribution center for mission items. These massive complexes will be a central hub in our everyday lives on planets and moons, and I'm looking forward to exploring these monstrosities. We will also see new ships be added to the game, as well as see several ships be updated and brought up to the gold standard that newer ships are at currently. There has been no news on which ships will be updated, but I'm hoping that the Reclaimer and the Retaliator are the first to be completed. These two ships have seen little to no love since they were released over six years ago. These features were recently confirmed to be targeted for the release of the first quarter of 2024. But what about the rest of the year? 
Well, honestly, my mind was blown with the next update they talked about after Q1. Pyro is one of those systems that we hear about on a daily basis, and we have seen so many videos about. We're all anxiously awaiting the release of this system. 4.0 is currently targeted and on track to be released summer of 2024. But how does this system affect the game in a meaningful way aside from a new location? Pyro is known for its lawless space and new frontiers, run largely by gangs such as Rough and Ready, 73R Vipers, Xenothrut, Headhunters, and Fire Rats, with independent organizations and pioneer settlers filling the much larger system. Since no governing authority or UEE presence exists, Pyro is a vastly more dangerous system than Stanton. This will likely make it more difficult and dangerous for people to go alone, and will introduce a lot of risk for people attempting to complete missions, mine valuable resources, salvage derelict ships, or even engage in cargo trade. But Pyro introduces the potential for the future once they can implement missions that will tie Stanton and Pyro together, where you can pick up a mission from either system and it sends you to the other. This will create more emphasis on the reputation system that could ultimately affect each other. For example, you have a high reputation with Crusader Security, and travel to Pyro and pick up a mission where an NPC makes you a tempting offer to pay you a good chunk of change to steal something from a platform on Crusader, and upon turning the quest back in, you lose rep with Crusader Security for your actions. With the release of Pyro in 4.0, they will also add in jump points, enabling travel between Stanton and Pyro, new quantum travel effects, hacking gameplay, resource management gameplay, and finally new HUD and MFDs which will give us more control over our ships and improve the readability of the HUD, visor, and lens systems, making all UI elements look much cleaner than they currently are and overall run smoother. This fixes a lot of issues that we currently have in the PU with unreadable UI. All of these updates are massive changes and are highly anticipated features that we've been waiting for for so long, and I for one did not expect CIG to try and push all of this out as quickly as they are hoping for. This also makes me wonder, if they are planning to add all of this in the first half of the year, what else are they planning for the second half of the year? Could we see other features like base building, crafting, blueprints, exploration gameplay loops, the next iteration of bounty hunting, and more? I think chances are pretty high, but as always we will have to wait and see if they deliver on their goals and promises for 2024. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, and if you would like to see more great Star Citizen news and gameplay, subscribe to the channel and join the community. Let's reach 1,000 subscribers before the end of the year. And check out these videos if you want to see more. As always, I hope that you have a wonderful day and a Merry Christmas, and I'll see you in the next video. Havoc out.